This is Twit. There's a website out there called there's an AI for that.com. And I know I'm just going to tell you, I look at that and that just tells me all the new AI stuff that's coming out <sighs> and just the product on things, but you just up every, up every day, some new AI thing. So, all right. So we're really crazy about this stuff. We love it. 1,853 AIs for 487 tasks. Um, is it going to be the flavor of the month in a year or two years or three years? Or just go, remember that when we were all into, you know, chat gpt stuff or do you think it's got more obviously you you think it has legs ben parr yes i am biased but i do think it but has where legs. in so what in what realm i mean the idea of a, a fancy eliza is not a winning proposition i don't think maybe it is maybe people are lonely. so so i i I'll, okay i i've gotten people who compare uh, generative AI things to Web3. And I think that's completely wrong. And I think that's a good way to think about this. Being uh, Web3 web, being a scam. Uh, web3 being something that is extraordinarily difficult to use and was most of the time, with very rare exceptions, a solution looking for a problem. Yes. Okay. I'll grant you, you can that. Created by you can venture capitalists who thought they might make some money on this solution waiting for looking for a it's, it's a technology about money. It was going to attract people with right. money. And I have lovely like friends at Web3. It's like NFT. It's, you know, it, yeah. it's, that's all that, right? Yeah. But AI, I could immediately tell you a hundred things that it could help you with. That's actually my question in a nutshell is, is this another cryptocurrency? It's, it's not. not. It's not. Mm. Because it actually has real use cases. I, it will actually help you, you know, summarize a whole bunch of things or quickly write the bones for a newsletter or write a newsletter if you know how to give it the prompts. It can write legal documents. It can do things that will speed up your life. And it is the absolute worst it will ever be in human history. It will only get better and more efficient and more effective with every day that passes. And so I don't think it's not a fad. It's more like the iPhone, the iOS, uh, where the first wave of apps on the iPhone were fart apps and they were horrible. And then People built Tinder and Uber right, right. and Snapchat. That's what I think will happen. And at a certain point, we won't be talking about AI as like AI conferences and like as this new thing. It'll just be part of the background. You don't talk about, oh, it's built on top of the iPhone. It just, it is. So let's, so it, oh, as I said, Go ahead. As I said earlier, it, it's here. It, like I said, I, I've grumped on a lot of things. This is one thing I'm not grumped mm -hmm. on. You, they're making so many things are just useful. You do a podcast, you do a show. Guess what? Some people are going to be able to upload a video and then have it chunk out 30 second clips, minute clips for YouTube, for Twitter, for anything. And and the things that are coming are so powerful and useful. The fact that half the country went and put out 42 pictures of themselves looking like Star Wars Dune characters should tell you the fact that art is something that's just built in human nature in your mind and you can make art of yourself. Like I didn't even do it for myself. I did it for my dad who passed away and I just generated 40 pictures of my dad that were new and interesting to me and my daughter. We looked at him. I almost cried a little bit because I thought it was so cool. There are so many things coming down the pipe. Audio. Guess what? If your audio sounds like trash feed into a, a AI, it'll fix it for you. There are so Uncle Leo is here to stay is here. It's, a, you know, it, it's here. I believe 100%. you because you look smart in those glasses. So I think you're right. I, hey, little yeah. Ben Parr, that's what they call me in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Daniel? You agree? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I agree, too, with what Ben was saying that, you know, we're a lot of us are having fun now, making fun of AI and like specifically Bing chat and the mistakes it makes. And I'm like, yeah, laugh. It's going to improve so rapidly that we won't be laughing at this stuff within weeks and months because this is unlike any other technology we've had. You know, you look at smartphones. They came out, what, 2004, 2005. Then the iPhone came out. And it was like a long time before that became mainstream. And that's how hardware works, right? It just takes a long, long time. This is just going to evolve so quickly. It becomes so much more efficient and powerful that I think people will be kind of uh, really surprised by how much this is going to affect and transform the economy. And I think that's going to be a really big thing over the next couple of years. This site that you talked about, Ben, there's an AI for that.com actually does it by year, starting in 2015 when there were three, 2016 when there were two. By 2017, there's more than a dozen. By 2018, there's double that. By 2019, there's double that. 
It's growing, you know, exponentially. This is 2020. There's almost too many to count. And of course, it's, 2023, it's it now you're going month by month because every, every day there's a dozen new applications for this. Is there going to be a law. winner? Can we say that one of the incumbents, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, will they will one of them be a winner? Ooh, that's a good one. And I wonder what I, Apple's game is. Like, what's what's? I don't know. Apple has <laughs> the worst Apple AI here? out there right now, Siri. But make, as we make learned, Siri a lot of these suck. <laughs> well, but a lot of these companies are holding on to something much much better. Maybe Apple will will bypass AI. Maybe they're that might be a mistake. I mean, Apple and and Meta both have put all their money in AR VR, <laughs> and it may turn out. In fact, it's starting to look yeah. like. That was a losing horse. Yep. Apple's voice. Well, Apple just released an AI product. The voice you talked about it. The, yeah, the, the, uh, the book, voice book readers. Yeah, and it's good. It's very good. It's quite good. Yeah. And so Apple is just very methodical about it. They will release something. They will greatly improve Siri. There will be all of that. Uh, there, I think there will be some winners and losers, but not like one completely wins and the other doesn't. It's the same thing as like you know. There's Android and there's iPhone, there's, you know, Word and there's Google Docs. It'll be the same kind of thing. E like each one's going to have a piece of the pie. Microsoft, as we all know, has done a very good job of taking a bunch of the pie. There's going to be a lot of like a only a few startups that are like the infrastructure layer or companies that like where all the other AI companies are built on top of. So like OpenAI is one of those companies, Google, there's a couple of others that are out there. And then there's going to just be thousands of other Is companies it? and products remember on top. you're all and, old enough to remember when search started there was yahoo which was a directory and then came out to vista and excite and a bunch i mean g ask jeeves and then along came google and it was like poof at, in the beginning of search, there were many choices. It was kind of like it is today, right? There were many good choices. But somebody came along and beat everybody else. Well, Uncle Leo, it's going to come down to the point of who's eating the most at the table. When you speak about Google, think about Google and when they acquired YouTube. You know, think about Microsoft when they got into the Facebook game. Then Facebook goes and gets Instagram. They're, the the behemoths are going to see the cream of the crop and they're going to be a, there's going to be a little arms race for, hey, I see your team come sit at the big boy table. I, I see your team. Okay, you got those guys. It's just a roster play of like who's picking up at the yard <laughs> and they're going to just be <laughs> integrated into the thing. So that's what's going to happen. It's it's the, the the top five. Like I said, the thing that we make fun of and like movies were like, you're going to be buying Google socks in 50 years. That's going to be true because these top companies are going to acquire the best products that come out and then integrate them into their products. And then the other company is going to try and compete against that. So the cream of the crop will get picked up and bought and that the same way everything else goes. It does seem, I have to say, this is kind of encouraging, and Ben, you might be encouraged as well, that you don't have to have the big bucks. You don't have to be a fang to do this, right? There are a lot of little scrappy startups in this space. Is that because it's cheap to do and well understood? Is it a, In other words, is AI a commodity already? It's so there's two versions of this and yes is sort of, and there's some of this in my information article coming out. Uh, one piece here is that it's just cheap and easy. If you're a developer to implement this complex AI, all you need to do is an API called open AI. It is just so easy. So to use do. theirs. In other words, use their large language model. How hard That's is it to create your own large language model? Stupidly hard and cost oh, a yeah. lot of money. Okay. Yeah. You have no. an expensive. So there's going to be expensive. Yeah. yeah. In fact, that's one what? of the things that's missing in this equation is to do something that is as up to date as a Google or Bing search means you have to be constantly building the corpus, uh, which is very it's expensive, right? I mean, this is not this is. I, mean, I think I think that's, Sam Altman yeah, said it's about not, ten times the cost. A chat GPT query is about 10 times the cost of a Google search. And and I think that's probably what it would be. You would be in order of magnitude more expense to do a search engine powered by AI. I mean, Microsoft teamed up with uh, OpenAI in, what, 2020 with their supercomputer. And right. that was what they were doing the training on and led to what Microsoft calls Prometheus, which is their version 
of a, with a language model that's built off of chat GPT uh, that has guardrails in it and different. Uh, Is that what know, they're using for Bing search? Is Prometheus? Yeah, it's called Prometheus. Okay. Yeah, and okay. so it, that's their language model, and it's so it's not exactly ChatGPT. It's it's built off of that. But you need a you know Microsoft was only one at the time of like five supercomputers in the world. Like <laughs> there's not a lot of them, and this could probably get to quantum computing eventually when you need even more power. But yeah, you really do need a lot, a lot of data to train these things, and that's where the internet comes in. And now real live people are using it. So Microsoft, I know their researchers right now are very excited about getting all this data. People are using it real time and they're fixing things and adjusting it because that's what's going to make it better. Ben, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there will be a couple of companies that power the core of what most AI applications will be using. A lot of the opportunity is going to be in companies built on top of things like OpenAI or Lambdas, which is Google's, uh, and utilizing it to and like adding their own data set or adding some of their own machine learning like for specific industries for like e-commerce or legal or things like that and there's going to be other use cases that'll come out i do think over time this like every other technology will get cheaper and easier uh it is going to be a commodity and that is a good thing for ai development uh and hopefully there are at least a couple of winners so that developers have a choice of what to use let me play you mentioned Apple, and as far as I know, this is the only thing Apple has released publicly is their uh, Apple Books reader. Although, gosh, they might have a car, self-driving vehicle AI going. Maybe Siri is secretly smart under the hood, and, and suddenly they'll flip a switch. But these voices are, as you said, these are voices are pretty good. This is a, um, a fiction, let me make sure my sound is turned on, My a fiction romance voice called Madison. Movement in the greenhouse drew his eye and a woman emerged. At first, he wasn't sure. You could see how the people whose voices they're stealing from Spotify might say, that's my, that's very close to my voice. Here's a, here's Jackson, a fiction baritone. I looked up to find a wall of trees had materialized ahead of us. That sounds like a little bit like an AI. Helena, nonfiction. On nights with a new moon, we would walk to the end of the beach to find our favorite constellation, the Pleiades. See, I could I, listen to her. I could listen to that. I think the, the nice thing is that everyone's going to have like their own preference for which AI they want to listen to. And look, I actually did a TikTok uh, with those voices and people like love them and talked about them. I didn't even mention before to you, Leo, I went viral on TikTok for a video about AI and education. And now I'm a TikToker for some reason. It got Congratulations. a million and a half views. What? How many? A million, million and, and a half? half views. Nice. Yeah. What uh, What's your TikTok handle, my friend? <laughs> just like everything else on the internet, at Ben Parr. Okay. Two R's. <laughs> okay. Should we watch? It? About Should we watch it? Do we just all we need to do is watch your TikTok, and we'll know everything we need to know? Which one of these? Uh, Chat GPT's cheating scandal. What? That's the most recent. The, the big one is a little bit down. It's the uh, AI and education. That's the one with a million and a half views. Wow. Is this going to be the beginning of your? information articles see my tiktok <laughs> <laughs> i've been busy the last two months here it is T ai is TED going talk, tiktok same same as ai is going to radically change everything and we aren't ready for it education is part one let's see oh i keep turning one education you've probably seen this on the internet recently it's chat GT so i encourage you to continue with the tiktok you know my son has Two million followers on the TikTok. That's right. He's, he's a, famous. He's, I should get some advice from him. He's become a yes. He's become a TikTok, but it's but it's all real. And you know what? Cooking cannot be done by an AI until they give it hands. And then watch out. So even, so even while then, we're, while we're having so while we're having this love fest about AI, have I, you ever tested I AI recipes? They're it's awful. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, so, let, let's let. So the that DJ that used Eminem in his set and he used artificial intelligence to write it and to do the voice and he went out there into the club and he pumped it out and everybody got hyped on it. Like, I already had to live through uh, Donald J. Trump and the Russian conspiracies of life and fake news and this and that. And now I got people out here doing DJ sets. Here, that are completely let me play a little bit of it like, for you. This is Dave Guetta. Uh, a million views on uh, of of this Twitter video of him. So you're saying this is a virtual 
an AI M&M. Yes. This is the future rave sound. I'm getting lost in an underground. So he's talking. This is the future rave sound. But he's applied m and M's voice to his voice. Okay, I I get up and, and dance. Yeah, you can so, M &M, bro. There's something that I made as a joke, and it works so good, I could not believe it. I discovered those websites that are about uh, AI. Basically, you can write lyrics in the style of any artist you like. So I typed, write a verse in the style of Eminem about future rave. And I went to another AI website. I want, Ed, I want Eminem to do Dave Guetta going... <laughs> You got to, to lose yourself to the music. You got to throw up at your mama's a spaghetti on your sweater. That would be so. Turnabout is fair play. That was pretty good. That sounded this like Eminem. What, yeah, and that's a problem, right? Like, if I were Eminem, I'd be the pissed. World we live in. Yeah. Well, not forget Eminem. I don't care about a rapper making a, a, a bumping track in. The it street. is though. That's, that's, that's where it'll happen, right? Because that's where sampling started. Now, yeah. for, again, forget sampling. Um, okay, let's put it this way: you, you're Eminem, and he's got 400 million followers of dudes that will bleach their hair at any moment because he said so. And you make this AI voice, and he says, "Give me a dollar at Eminem needs a dollar .com, and he just rocks off. A, like, there's so many. I mean, uh, Dan, don't. I am a sociopath. Do not come for me. I do think of bad, evil <laughs> things, and how the world works, but don't. Don't don't send the cops <laughs> after me. I'm just saying, there's a lot of evil things out here that are coming down the pipeline too. You and got to lose so yourself good. to the oh, music. <laughs> Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. Seven dollars a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners, and finally the Twit Plus feed. With shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.